Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Andre and we've got two beautiful fresh Canadian bone-in hams and we're going to turn these into Black Forest ham for you. So first thing first, we are going to take these apart as far as I need to take them apart. So if you don't know, you're looking at the raw ham. If you've eaten Black Forest ham or seen it, this is how it starts, this whole thing here. And I'm gonna take it apart and uh, show you from start to finish. Trusty boning knife. The first thing we're gonna do is take the pork cock off because we don't need that. There you go, pork cock. Let me show you there. The next thing I do, I'm going to take the skin off because we don't need that on here. And like anything, there's many ways to do this. Uh, some people will leave the skin on, take the bone out first and then do that. I prefer to do it this way. And there again, put your knife up into the skin. If you cut through like I did there, that's no big deal. I'd rather cut into that than into the meat. You know, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. It just, the logistics of getting a whole ham isn't as easy as you think if you're a civilian. Thank you to a good customer of mine that I know through my day job. Uh, I will put the link to their business below. They've got a great sausage facility. Now we're gonna just take out the H bone. Just take a little bit of this off. And this is actually connected to the themer. We're gonna take that out too, but we're gonna take this out first. You just try and go around the bone. And I don't expect everybody to be able to do this, but I want to show you things that I've learned throughout my career as being a butcher and sausage maker. There we go. I'm gonna leave that there. We'll trim that off after. And right here, you have the one ball joint of the themer and it's coming down here. So we're actually going to cut through here. And there's another joint, part of the pork hock that we're gonna get to as well. Doo, 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 doo. Try to get through all these sinews and there we go. That bone is out. So you can do a two or three muscle ham. I'm actually gonna just do two and I'll explain what I'm talking about. So now, all we wanna do is open it up because we're gonna take out all of this fat and sinew because we want everything, we want the meat to touch when we actually form the ham because you want everything to try and stick together. All the fat out, we don't want that. Because you have to remember what's in the middle here will be the middle of the ham. So once it's together, it's not going to look as pretty. Trim this off. That looks ugly. Take all this stuff out because we don't want it either. Because we want a nice looking finished product. There's a big sinew that we're going to take off a little bit. And there are glands if you find them. Take them out, because you don't want them. Got that part done. These things look beautiful. Just a touch on it. So now this is, has three main pieces. You've got the, the inside, the eye, or eye of the round, or the, and the outside. Some, some places will only use two muscles, so they'll take the inside and the outside, they'll actually take the eye of the round out, use it for other things. I'm gonna leave it all together. Like here, it's actually still joined, 
but I've cleaned it out very nicely so that when we form it, it will look good. I'm just gonna clean up real quick and on to step two. And now the part which is gonna take this fresh pork and make it a ham. We've got this beautiful brine here, which I made last night. Easy thing to do. Got some great spices in there. They've been sitting all night. I'm using pickling salt because we want it to look pink like a black forest ham. So I'm just gonna give it another quick mix. And I will list everything that I have in there. Now this is the fun part. We get to use the little hand injector. So we're gonna suck up some brine. And if you watch that one pastrami video, you'll know. Basically, we're just gonna put it in, squeeze, and, and every inch or so, we're gonna just do this. Because we want that flavor all through the meat. Uh, because if we just let it sit in the brine, it might not go through good enough. So this way you're really ensuring that it will. Plus it's gonna add extra moisture and help you give a, get a juicier product in the end. But we are going to put this in the brine for a few days after we've done this. Anyways, I'm gonna just keep doing this and try not to make too much of a mess. I'm gonna put the hams in here and then cover them with the brine, just that we cover them. I know it's a little messy and don't waste this stuff. Put that in there, that's just Can't say it enough, they look fantastic. That brine smells great. I'm just gonna cover this with some cling wrap and uh, throw it down in the fridge. And today is Tuesday night. We're gonna make these Saturday. So they're gonna sit in here for a few days and really cure, let that flavor really develop. I know commercially they do it a lot faster. We're not commercially, we're at home, we're a home user and we're gonna end up with a fantastic product. Welcome back everybody. It's a Saturday morning, nice early morning. Fire's going, smoker's almost to temp, and uh, let's get inside and, and put this Black Force ham together. We got everything set up. This is the stuffing horn we're gonna need to use to make the actual Black Force ham. I've got netting which is what you would use to form the ham. But I also have it, a little trick, I actually have it soaking in a mineral oil because you want it to be able to come off the ham easily once, once it's done. Some of the newer materials have release agents in them, this doesn't, it's just a cotton blend uh, netting. The hams look fantastic, we're gonna just get them out and uh, get this show on the road. Okay, now we gotta get this netting on this horn. So this actually has, I'm gonna call it a foot pedal, which you push down on, it compresses the horn. And now, we just take the netting and ruck it onto the horn. Okay, got that done. Now what we're gonna do, gonna, just don't have the room I want, but anyways, we're gonna take the ham and orientate it the way we need it. If I'm still in frame. So we're gonna take it now, put it into our horn. And 
wasn't perfect. What I got to do now is just massage it a little bit to form it and then finish off. And I'm just going to tie the ends because you want to keep pressure on this to keep that shape. Not perfect, I'm going to admit that, but look, looks fantastic. And let's get the other one done. I got that done, but with full transparency, I did not like the third muscle in there. Like I was saying previously, you can do two or three muscle. I took out the eye of the round on both. It was just making it too big. Now, I've got a beautiful shape, much more even, and uh, I personally like this better. Uh, one reason I wasn't using a big enough netting. If I had the next size up, it would work better, but they, it was just too tight. And I made a judgment call and I went with it. So I got these two done. They look fantastic. And uh, let's go get them in the smoker. One. And two, they look fantastic. The little eyes, I'm gonna smoke them as well. Just gonna put them over there. I'm not gonna waste that meat. We're gonna cook it as well. There we go, in she goes. The hams are in there now. We're gonna let them go for two hours. We're gonna come back and check. Uh, we just want a nice color on them. We don't need them low and slow like a brisket. We don't need them to 205 or whatever. We want them to 71 degrees Celsius or 163 Fahrenheit. We just want them cooked to the internal because we still want to be able to slice this. We don't need it to fall apart. That's not what I want to create. And uh, at two hours, we'll take the temp and uh, see where we're at. Okay, people, we're back and uh, let's take the first look. Oh, look at those. Those look beautiful. Okay, like I said, we're going to take the temperature because we just want to know where we're at with these. Now, it's always important to find the coldest spot. We are at 35 degrees Celsius. we got a long ways to go, but that's okay. Uh, they are looking fantastic. They've got great color. I'm going to let them go about another hour. That's it. And then I'm going to wrap them. The reason I'm wrapping these is because I want... A lot of that moisture to stay in I don't want them to dry out too much that's my whole premise with and I don't want them getting too dark they're gonna be a very nice smoky color but that's where I want them so let's uh, give them another hour and uh, come back and wrap them <clears throat> oh my god they look awesome okay I gotta do this quick so we're just gonna wrap them and then get them back in the smoker And of course it's windy again. I am using some butter I threw in the smoker just. beautiful packages they're going back in and I will see you guys later when they are done back inside I hope you guys are excited they are done they got to the internal I wanted uh, it took another two and a half hours they've been resting here for about an hour I'm hungry I'm excited to see the final product and let's just dive in I'm just gonna... they will lose water because we are not using phosphate Oh, look at look at that color. That looks fantastic. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take the netting off. So if I did my job right, it should. Oh, it's coming off. Look at that. See, it pulls right off. That's what the oil helps do. 
That is fantastic. I'm gonna look at that. Look at that. Are you guys ready? I'm just gonna dive in. I'm gonna just slice it in half and uh Oh yeah, I get to use my knife again. I'm you guys ready? 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 show you there. I'm going to show you on that camera. Look at that beautiful ham. That looks absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, I'm going to show you here, it's pink all the way through so I did a good job on injecting. It's going to fall apart a bit because we don't use phosphates which, act, phosphates which act like a glue. I'm not going to shave it, but I'm just going to... Look at that. Oh, that is... Oh, wow. Mmm. That is so good. I'm so happy right now. I know, talking with my mouth full. You guys just see, I'll show you here. It's, it's nice and tender. That has a great flavor. Oh my God, I'm so, you don't know, understand how happy I am right now. This is just to show you still still nice and juicy so oh, awesome i i'm so happy i hope you guys are happy because this is fantastic i wish you guys could all taste this that would be the ultimate i am totally happy with how this turned out I just want to say, if you guys have questions or if you don't think I explained something well enough, put them below. I will go over in more detail if you want. I just wanted to show you that this is my background. I come as a butcher and sausage maker. This is what we used to do commercially. Uh, yeah, it just brings back so many memories. It's awesome. And uh, to taste something that tastes that good that you make, it's even better. It, it just, uh, it's a good feeling. And I'm gonna have lots of leftovers. This will, I'm gonna let it cool down properly and then put it in the fridge to really cool down overnight. Uh, I will just cut it into portions, vacuum pack it and freeze it. And it's gonna last quite a while that way. And that way, if you want some ham, go to the freezer, pull it out, thaw it out quick and you've got beautiful black forest ham whenever you want for sandwiches, omelets, uh, salads, whatever. You got beautiful ham. And with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Uh, leave me those comments. Uh, I love reading them. Hit that like and subscribe. And like always, happy eating.